Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Matt, and today you might hear a little bit of background noise. That's just my fan writing. It is currently 82 degrees here, and I mean, I'm from the Midwest. That's really stinking hot, so I'm just trying to bear through it. But anyway, we're going to be looking at some floors today. I got three things for you. We got eight floor improvements, 14 floor ideas, and eight color palettes. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. So the first is something you guys have probably seen before in your builds. Simple cobblestone floor. And just some easy ways we can improve it is adding in some crackstone bricks, some andesite, and some gravel, and a few buttons and pressure plates, all stone, to give it more texture and a better look while incorporating more colors. If you want to go more for a ruined out in nature look, uh, add some mossy variants like the mossy stone bricks, add some grass, some leaves, mossy cobblestone, and even some, you know, just stairs, slabs, just kind of roughing it up. And you can also add that in there too if you want it to look more weathered and ruined. Now the second is a slab floor, or not slab, pardon me, is a plank floor. This can be easily improved by adding in some of the stripped variety. This will work with whatever planks you're using, uh, dark oak, acacia, um, spruce, birch. I'm, I haven't tested it out yet, but I'm also assuming that this will work for the uh, nether woods, you know, the warped fungus and crimson ones. So I'm very interested to see that. But anyway, if you just layer in some stripped wood, you'll get a very nice effect. Now the second to last improvement we have is a carpet. This is just red wool, very simple, but you can add glazed terracotta on the outside to give it a border and then raise it up in the middle, and you can even add in a light source underneath. And then we have just plain acacia. I personally really like acacia bark. I think it looks cool. Just all the colors and textures of it. If you want to improve it a little bit, just add in a little checker pattern, you know. I mean, on the outsides, I have cyan terracotta, but you could also use gray concrete powder. That'll look very similar and just keep it looking very gray, but while also giving a little bit of a blue. Very, very much like that. Then we have a polished granite floor. Now, this can be improved by crossing in some regular granite. It gives you a little bit of decoration, almost like some places are cracked or like it has just more variety. Now this also works for diorite, andesite, and even if you want to make other designs, like, huh, would you look at that? That's my channel logo. If you want to do any sort of plaid or crisscross designs, this is definitely the way to go. Now, those were some just easy improvements. Oh, was that five, actually? You know, I might have miscounted. I'm not very good at math, so please excuse me if I did. But those are some easy improvements to pre-existing floors. Now, let's take a look at some new floors you may have not seen before. Now, the first one has um, beehives and yellow glazed terracotta. This could be problematic in getting all of these. You know, you might uh, get stung a lot. So if you do have a bee allergy, maybe uh, maybe don't use this one. But it does give you a very nice yellow look, and the browns meld together, and the light yellows and whites, very nice all around. Now we're using smooth quartz and honey, or combs, honey combs here. Uh, the honeycomb is one of my favorite blocks. I, I really like the look of it. I think, you know, it's very hard to find a nicer looking block than this. But we can incorporate it by just having a small divot around with very clean colors. Now this black concrete and black quartz looks very nice as a linoleum floor. You know, kind of like what you would see in an old kitchen or diner. Very simplistic, almost like a chessboard, but timeless. Looks very nice, very clean. 
and the borders of the quartz block give it just a little bit extra whereas if you were to use smooth quartz you might not get that now we have some stripped logs just kind of arranged in you know just lines we have spruce and dark oak they kind of go together but you can also do a checkerboard pattern with this here we're using a bunch of different colors of terracotta in almost a patterned rug um, personally this is not one of my favorites but if you like it go for it expand upon it make it however you want it to be this is your floor you can do anything with it now here is a very uh, kind of shack looking build, you know? Um, all of the woods are very sort of broken up with the carpets and the buttons and the concrete powder and the trap doors, just giving it a lot of depth and variety. Um, if you want to check out an amazing way to use this, I cannot recommend Good Time with Scar enough. In Hermitcraft season, I think it was six, he made a volcano and on the inside with like a pirate cave, he used this sort of flooring a lot. It's just beautiful. Definitely go check him out. I'll hopefully put an I card up there. Then here we have three different varieties of like a, a few upside down L shapes or Tetris blocks. We're using honeycombs yellow terracotta and yellow concrete in this one. And in this one we're using bricks, regular terracotta, and granite. This looks awesome if you're going for a colonial build feel. Um, not necessarily as a floor, but if you just have plain brick walls, these are great things to add in, and we'll get to that later. Now over here we're using stripped logs, dark oak, oak, and birch. Now looking at this, I'm just, you know, I'm reminded of a cookie. You know, it just looks like, you know, one of mom's homemade chocolate chip cookies. Couldn't be better. I love that. We'll put that there for next time. And, you know, again, just using very simple shapes and colors that go well together to make interesting floors. Now... This next one may be one of my favorites. It's it's in three parts, but that be, that's because it's expandable. This is kind of a, a Celtic knot design made out of stripped logs, uh, stripped dark oak on jungle planks with lapis in the center to give it a little bit of a show-offy feel. Now you can follow this along and see how it interacts with itself. And this is just a great way to border some of your larger rooms, brings a lot of class in, and just makes it look really fancy. Uh, it's just another one of those little details that I love adding into my builds. I'm all about the details. You know, the bigger picture, that's important, but the details, that's where it's really at. Now, if you're a bit of a hoarder, like my parents, this is the kind of floor you want. It has barrels everywhere, in shulker boxes. Now, what it lacks in looks, it completely makes up for in storage. I haven't run the calculations, but you could fit a whole lot in here, like just insane amounts of stuff. And you know, it doesn't. While it doesn't look as good as some of the others, it doesn't look half bad. Now, these are also very interesting, especially with the incorporation of the water and the honey. But these are a very clean, modern-looking kind of build. It's something you would want in maybe a, a more futuristic or modern Zen garden. Well, I could see this being a very nice part of. But we have two water ones with lapis blocks and dark prismarine. And then one with glass and honey blocks with honeycombs in the center. I think, you know, these just look so interesting. And the fact that you don't bob up and down while walking across, I think is just all the more better. You don't want to be jumping around in your own house. Now that's all of the new floor ideas. So we're going to be taking a look at some very simple, very easy to remember 
color palettes, that material palettes that you can choose from. Now, remember, it's not you're not limited to these, but these are just some ideas to help get you going on your build. It's a very industrial or colonial style with the brick, the granite, and the terracotta. We have a more ruster, rustern, <laughs> I don't think that's a word, more rustic style with the uh, oak logs, spruce wood, and strict spruce. Then we have a more, you know, I don't know, I want to say vanilla feel, you know, with stripped, stripped, strip. Oh, that's not, no, pardon me, but uh, stripped oak, stripped birch, and then smooth sandstone. Um, it provides a really nice color gradient that I really like. This is um, acacia, cracked stone bricks, and andesite. Uh, in place of acacia, you can totally use any kind of stone or anything that would kind of complement this, or you can use all of it together. Now these are some just darker, softer colors. It's similar to that, but you know, just a bit darker. We have gray wool, cyan terracotta, and gray concrete powder. Um, you do have to be careful with this because they do fall. But other than that, very nice looking. I don't quite know what I was thinking here. I I can't think of a way that I would use this. The colors do go well together. It almost looks like a blueberry pie. I don't know. Man, this video is making me hungry. Note to self, do not record before dinner. Second to last here we have some... Some, uh, what is this, kale? Seaweed. Kelp. <laughs> Definitely not kale. Uh, kelp blocks um, green terracotta and dark prismarine. I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, that line isn't in the middle. It's kind of messing with me a bit, so I'm just going to try to ignore that. And lastly, if you're going for a more orange rustic feel, then we got some stripped acacia, some more terracotta, some jungle planks. All of those just kind of blend together very nicely. Well, I hope that wasn't too boring for you guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking it and subscribing. I also do Twitch streams. Every Saturday we do a hardcore survival series. So be sure to check that out. You know, we got the boys on there. We're having fun. Drinking bubbly and cracking jokes. Well, that just about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much. Good night.